Hello, my friends, and thank you so much for coming to spend part of your Saturday, April 13th with me. It has been exactly two weeks since Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly went missing three miles from their destination as they were traveling from Hugoton, Kansas to Eva, Oklahoma. I've been advised that is the correct pronunciation, Eva, like forever. And they still have not been found. But today we have some amazing news and that is there are at least four confirmed arrests in their disappearance. And as you know, I have been on this channel with court documents, redacted, I have not mentioned any names. Tonight we're gonna mention some names and we also have Rock Chalk with us backstage who has been boots on the ground looking for Veronica and Jillian for at least 10 days, but she will tell you more about that. She actually learned about this case from watching my show on April 2nd, which was a Tuesday. And the next morning she got in her truck. She lives in Wichita with a couple of horses, a couple of working dogs, a couple of pieces for protection. And she drove down to the scene and started searching for Veronica and Jillian. And she talked to so many locals and they were petrified, petrified to speak to her, petrified to give any information because the family that we can now confirm that has been arrested, or at least some of the members of the family, and actually one is the grandmother of the children of Veronica Butler and her boyfriend and two other individuals who lived on her boyfriend's land, which Rock Chalk is gonna tell us is like a compound. Um, and it was scary down there in the Oklahoma Panhandle and it was dangerous and nobody wanted to talk. And we were so confused because although the OSBI, which the Oklahoma it is the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation was involved in the search, we didn't learn until 48 hours ago that the FBI was also involved in the search. And quite frankly, Rock Chalk, who was boots on the ground in town, did not see any searching going on. She was the only one searching. She met up with Carrie Moody, who also has a YouTube channel, and they searched together, the two of them. And there were some reporters down there from News Nation that were covering this, but it wasn't getting a lot of other coverage. And even the coverage that was out there was just not accurate. So I can formally announce to you now that the following arrests are confirmed. Three of them were made in Cimarron County, Oklahoma. And one of them is made was made in Texas County, Oklahoma. And just I just wanna show you, uh, I'm traveling right now. So I'm in a hotel with terrible Wi-Fi, and I apologize to all of my Karen Reed viewers because I know you guys really wanna do that show and I have it scheduled for tomorrow. I think I scheduled it for five o'clock, but that is gonna be a long one. That's gonna be three hours. I don't have that time. I don't have the bandwidth here and I'm, I'm doing the best I can. So I just, I wanna show you just so you have an idea what the Oklahoma counties look like. Okay, so here, here's a map of the counties of Oklahoma. I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is the panhandle right here. There are three counties. This is my cursor on your screen. It's not a fly. Do not break your television set. Cimarron County is all the way to your left. This is the Oklahoma Panhandle. Texas County is to the right of Cimarron County, where Guymon is located. Cimarron is where Boyce or Boys City is located. It's spelled Boise like Idaho, but it's pronounced Boys. And then to the right of that is Beaver County. These three counties make up the Panhandle of Oklahoma. And so many viewers wrote to me and told me that the Panhandle is like literally like the Wild West, like the forgotten country. Like there's no law enforcement close by. People um, are afraid there. It is, it is like the Wild West. The population of Keys, Oklahoma, where the grandma of Veronica's, Veronica Butler's children lives, is 267. That's the population of Keys, Oklahoma. I'm gonna announce the names for you. The following people are confirmed to have been arrested. Tiffany Michelle Adams, 54 years old. That is the grandma. And we've been calling her grandma or granny and she is only 54 years old. I have a picture of her. I'm gonna pull it up in a second when I get rock chalk on here. 
Tad Burt Cullum. I don't have his age in front of me right now. That is the boyfriend of Tiffany Adams. Cole and his Cole and his wife Cora, last name Twombly, T W O M B L Y, I think, or L E Y. Uh, he's 50. I don't. I'm not sure of her age, but she he lives on Tad's land and he owns nine hogs. And I believe that two other people were arrested as as well. But I want to bring Rock Chalk on because she did the last show with me, and I just went on her show for a couple of minutes before I wanted to come on with you guys and. Uh, Rock, I see two of you back there, but I'm not sure which one is you. So let me see. It says you're in with audio only. Is there something you need to change? Can you, can you, is that one you or is the other one you? Can you hear me, Rock? Because I can't hear you. All right, let's see. Rock, are you there? I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear Rock? Let me say edit mic settings. Let me see if I can edit your mic settings. I can't hear you, Rock. All right, Rock, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick you out and then see if you can come back in. Because I had two of you in here, but neither of you. I'm just going to kick you out. All right. All right. So that didn't work. But uh, I want to show you some. Uh, OSBI still has not posted this on their Twitter. All right. There she is. Let's see if she can get in now. All right. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I just can't see your avatar, but that's okay. Um, how are you? I'm glad to be home. <laughs> Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear Rock? All right. Go on. We're not going to talk about hogs. Let's stop the hog talk in the background because we don't have any proof of anything having to do with the hogs other than that Cole actually owned hogs. That's all we know, right? Right. And also, I would like to let you know that I do know that family is here and I would love for everybody to be respectful to the family. They follow my channel. Everybody from my channel just came here. And I would just ask that everybody res be respectful because they are here. We do not know if Jillian or Veronica is alive or not. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, let's just keep praying that they are alive. And please, chat, even my people, be respectful, please. Yes, thank you. That was such a great point because we know that they are watching and we have been praying for them and their families since we've been covering this case for the last two weeks. And I know that when I spoke to you last on Thursday, you were exhausted. You were getting frustrated. You could see how afraid people in the local area were to talk to you or to talk about this. Or they, Actually, they were more eager to talk to you than their own law enforcement, right? Oh, absolutely. Everywhere I went, because I was going live, I I'm gonna I, I felt like a celebrity, and I don't like feeling that way. Right. But I they would see where I was at, and they'd pull up, and I'd have to mute myself because they didn't want to be on camera, and I don't blame them. Right. Everybody knows everybody there, and I do want to tell everybody, I did a lot a lot of lives, and I would have people, grown men, call me crying. Rock. Wow. My wife heard me on your live. Please take that live down. I didn't have my computer where I could edit it. And I'm not, I'm not usually a YouTube type of person. This is something that's fairly new to me. Mm -hmm. And I was there to help. So I didn't mind making it private, but I'm not in it, for, you know, for the money or anything like that. So making it mm -hmm. private was only to save the locals because they are that scared. When you have ranchers that are driving around with AK-47s in their floorboard to shoot coyotes, like, I don't think so. Right. And I mean, this is a powerful family, right? The people are afraid of them for a reason. Oh, absolutely. You know, there, there's a place down south where um, Tad, since he's been released, the boyfriend of the granny, I'm just going to keep calling her granny because she don't like it. But Tad, the boyfriend... He's got what you call a, a compound there, and they're sovereign citizens. And you could probably explain that better to me, what a sovereign citizen is, 
Mm -hmm. you go to the FBI page, it is very, it's a very strong, they don't like government. They uh, don't want to abide by any laws. There's a lot to them. And that whole compound, I'm going to call it a compound all the time. That compound, they call themselves God's Misfits. That's the name of them. Mm -hmm. And do not get it twisted with the New Mexico God's Misfits. And I will tell you, I was headed there one day to this Prairie View school because there was a psychic that said that these women were at a school. Um, they were alive. They were badly beaten. And I personally don't believe in psychics, okay? But a lot of people in the crowd does. A lot of a lot of subscribers does. So listen, it was a lead, so I continue to follow the lead. And so we just we was headed out there. And my team, and I when I say my team, we're all together. I might be the spokesperson. But yeah. we're all together. They threw a fit, and I could see it. What I saw was, Katie, go to Discord. And I was like, wait a minute. They don't go to Discord without me. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. So I pulled over the side of the road, and they said, turn around. You're being set up. And we were getting threats in the chat saying, Rock, I can see you from a mile away, and I can shoot you from a mile away. So I was driving. I wasn't seeing them threats, but they were. And I have to thank all of them because they're my family. They probably saved my life that day, honestly. Wow. That's incredible. So anyway, I have a picture up on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. I can. I can. You can or you can't? I can. This is a picture of Tiffany and Tad. Yes, it is. From Tiffany's Facebook from 2018. Right. And I did see her the other day in Boyd City. But she didn't recognize me, and she didn't look anything like that. She looked really rough, and I, I I'm just gonna tell you, I know this is a YouTube channel, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's for entertainment purposes all the time, usually. Yeah. yeah. But um, either she was highly into some drugs, which I don't think so, or the stress of what she did was really weighing on her. And I think it's the second one. I really wow. do. And there is rumors out there. And, and I keep getting them, and I I'm, I want to wait till they are verified. But I'll say it so that you don't get in trouble. Uh -huh. But there's rumor that she has confessed. So wow. confess to what? Because I'm still praying that these women are alive. Me so. too. Yes. And and I thought, and you and I thought, and we've discussed this, this at length, is that we did not think that she would be the one to get her hands dirty. We thought she'd be hiring someone to do this job. Or, you know, she'd be orchestrating it or pulling the strings, but not, you know, getting her hands dirty. So, yeah, what is it that she confessed to? Here's another picture I put up on the screen. Is the screen I've redacted the children's faces. But this is Tiffany. In the and middle, her sons. Yeah. And her son. So this is Wrangler on the right with the, the little girl in the pink dress on um, his knee. Right. This is her daughter. I, I, somebody pulled up another name, uh, Tiffany Adams. There is another Tiffany Adams because when I was going through the Oklahoma court records there I think her middle initial is a Tiffany a Adams I don't know that that's her daughter um I don't know her daughter's name but this is her other son here on the left and he's an adult so I didn't redact his picture right. but this was from I'm not sure when that one is that one was from 2020 uh, I can't see it right now but it is not that old here's another picture of Tiffany she's giving me Bonnie Raitt vibes I know right yeah so like when we were calling her grandma and stuff, I'm like, she's not that old. Like everyone's getting this wrong, this impression that she's some, you know, elderly woman with a cane and a, and a walker or, or a walker. That's not, this is, she's a, a, a young grandma. Yeah. And again, she does not like the name granny. <laughs> and so I call her granny. I'm a grandma. You know, right. I've got, I'm 50, I'll be 56, believe it or not. I'm so glad the case is breaking. Because my birthday is April 17th. Oh. And as you know, that's the day that Veronica was supposed to get custody of these kids. Yeah. And uh, no better birthday present than to have a closure to this. This case is going to carry on. And I know, Melanie, you're going to follow it. And oh, that's yeah. what I've told the family. Please oh, do yeah. follow it because I don't know how to do the court records like you do. Mm -hmm. And I am a big fan of yours. And I will Thank be following you to follow that. Oh, 
Here's a, a mugshot of Wrangler from his uh, February 21st of 2024. Um, domestic violence charges that he was arrested on. He is the father of Veronica Butler's children. He um, he has not been arrested in this case. And it is believed that he did report to court-ordered rehab the same day that he was released from jail, which was March 22nd of 2024. There was a court order in place that he was to report that same day to the Salvation Army, Army Rehab in Oklahoma City, right? Right. And I have a little bit of he, info. Yes, I have a little tell. bit of info on that. So his father, I'm not going to say his father's name, mm -hmm. his father picked him up from the jail and the judge gave him, his father signed a paper and they were only given so, so much amount of time. He had to go straight from the jail to the rehab and they actually made it and had an hour and a half to spare. And so the dad ate with him and stuff, but it has been verified by the grandma to me that absolutely the dad got him to that rehab, and absolutely, he checked in on the 22nd. So that yeah. is a given. The court order was that he could have no contact with any family while he was there. Right. And he has not been able to contact his dad or his grandma. He's had no contact. But I assume, as you know, that the OSBI more than likely has talked to him. But as far right. as family... Oh, sure. As far as family, they have not got to speak to him at all. Yes. I, and I heard that, too, that for at least the first 30 days, right. there was a no contact order. He was not allowed to speak to anybody from rehab. And anybody who's been in a program knows that you're not allowed to have any outside contact with anybody for the first 30 days, at least. And he was scheduled or court ordered to be in there in that facility for six months. So people are saying, yeah, I feel bad for him if he wasn't involved in it. Yeah. And, you know. So I just want to clarify that this mugshot is not has nothing to do with the arrests that were made today. Uh, all four that we know of, and you're telling me that there may be two more. I'm going to repeat the names because we have 6,400 people in the chat right now. If everyone would just hit the like button. And then after we're done here, we're, I'm going to teleport you back to Rock Chalk, who's going to uh, continue her boots on the ground coverage. In, well, like are and you now? subscribe. Listen, yes. a lot of the a lot of the locals. They were very new to YouTube. They did, they knew nothing about YouTube. And the one thing I've expressed to them, not to use their real names because the, the YouTube world is crazy. Yeah, but yeah, um, the, the subscribe button, in case new people has come, the subscribe button, if they like and subscribe and hit that bell button, anytime you go live, that will make them aware that you're alive. Uh, you, you're alive. Well, you're alive, <laughs> but you will be live so that they can also follow this case. That's very important. You got yes. a lot of people in your chat right now that I'm probably the only YouTube channel they had ever been on. Right. And it's so. free. Subscribing is free. It doesn't cost anything. All it does is helps the algorithm. So this stream will get pushed out. So this information will get pushed out to the people who want to see it and need to see it. And YouTube has a weird algorithm. So subscribing is free. I did put the chat on subscribers only. So if after you hit that subscribe button, you are welcome to come into the chat and chat. I have the best mods on YouTube and we don't tolerate the trash talk. We don't tolerate curse words. We don't tolerate bullying. None of it. So all that stuff you will see gets deleted before you can barely even read it because my mods are amazing, as are yours, uh, Rock. So, um, Oh, thank saying, you. Yeah, their team. I love them. Yeah. I'm just putting up the missing poster for a second because, again, Veronica and Jillian are still missing. They have not been found. We do not know the status. We are hoping for the best. We are hoping that they are found alive. But it has been two weeks since they left Hugot in Kansas on their trip to Eva, Oklahoma, which was a 45-minute drive. The car was found abandoned on, um, tell me, Rock, Road L off of 95? Yes, it's Road L. And I, I want to correct some things on that. Please because do. I drove that road a lot. Mm -hmm. In your peripheral vision, you could see it, okay? So it wasn't like the car was hidden. I believe it was placed there, and I will say that until the court tells me otherwise. It right. was not hidden. It really was just barely off the road. You could see the cars go by there last Saturday. So the way that I was told is Veronica and Jillian left about 8 to go pick up the kids, okay? Mm -hmm. I know that that car was seen between 9.15 and 10 o'clock down that road L, okay? Mm -hmm. So things happened real quick. 
whatever yeah. happened happened real quick. But there was there was a guy that was counting cattle out there. There's several eyewitnesses. I'll just tell you that there were several eyewitnesses, and the eyewitnesses never saw the women at that car at that spot. Is from what I was told, and I believe them. They did talk to me, and I believe them one hundred percent. Wow. So, um, and we know that they probably left at 8 a.m. because Veronica's visitation started at 9 a.m. So she wanted to get there uh, in time. And we know from the court order that the meeting place was at a place called Four Corners, which is where you took us to on the April 6th show. You went there and you showed us what Four Corners is like. And for the people who haven't seen that show or who don't know what Four Corners is like, describe it to them. It's... It used, to, I'll tell you what, it used to be back in the day, it was a restaurant. Kansas used to not sell beer on Sundays, but mm -hmm. Oklahoma did. So it was like a, a a gas station restaurant, and it looked like an autom automotive shop. Back in the day, that was the hit place to go. But since all the laws changed and, and Kansas sells beer on Sundays, it pretty much shut that business down. It is so deserted it's got junk cars everywhere it's got trailer houses just sitting there i mean it it looks like a junkyard to me and it is it's horrible like even i would suggest this to everybody even if you're in a good custody uh dispute always go somewhere where, the, where it's lit and there's cameras there was no cameras i went up and down that street even yarborough school where Veronica went to school is on that road. You realize that school did not have cameras. They are getting cameras now, but what school in America don't have cameras? I was just, I couldn't believe it. Well, it's listen, when Veronica graduated high school, she was the only one in the senior class. She was the only person graduating that year. So it's a tiny school, right? And like people say, like the, the Oklahoma panhandle is, is the, like the land that time forgot. Well, right? it's called the no man's land. No man's land. Yeah. Right. And the reason it was called the no man's land is when Kansas and Oklahoma and Colorado and New Mexico made their borders, nobody marked that spot. And there was heavy gambling, murders, prostitution. Mm -hmm. And finally, the federal government came in and said, hey, we got to do something about it. And Oklahoma took that over. But it was called right. the no man's land for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a great comment. So Joseph Kane, you win so far for comment. I think I danced with Granny at an 83 dead show. Thank you for that. Okay. So for those of you who are just tuning in, there have been four confirmed arrests uh, in the disappearance of Veronica Butler, age 27, and Jillian Kelly, age 39, who went missing in the Oklahoma panhandle, traveling from Kansas exactly two weeks ago today on April 30th of 2024. Tiffany Adams, who is pictured here on the right side, is the grandmother of Veronica Butler's grandchildren. She is the paternal grandmother, the mother of Wrangler Cole Rickman, who is the father of the children. And on the left side of your screen is her boyfriend, who was also arrested. His name is Tad Burt Cullum. If you watched my stream where we went over court documents, uh, we talked, we didn't name anybody, but we talked about them. And he had some, he had a felonious, um, or he, he had a felony for waving a weapon at a person last summer, it was mysteriously dismissed. Um, and we have those court papers too, but uh, Rock, you're telling us that there are two other arrests that you have been able to confirm. So maybe right. you could tell the viewers about that. Well, let me find my sheet of paper. I've been writing stuff. Oh, I wrote them down. So maybe you could tell, tell us about um, Cole and Cora, what you know about them, because we knew about Tiffany Michelle Adams being the mother of Wrangler, the dad of the children. And we knew that she was in a custody battle with Veronica. And um, we know that Tad Cullum is her boyfriend for some time. I mean, this Facebook picture is from 2018. So they've been together for some time. We know because we went over the court documents that at one point, Veronica and Wrangler, when they were together, lived in a house owned by Tad or his family. Um, but tell us what you know about Cole and Cora Twombly. Cole and Cora Tombley used to be, um, they used to show cattle and they got, it was too expensive. They ended up getting nine hogs last year. 
but from people that are really close to them that grew up with them, they don't have much money. And like they hardly ever have their electricity on. So it said, like again, this is an entertainment channel, but this is very reliable sources that told me that. So they they would almost do anything for Tad and them because half the time they couldn't have electricity. Wow. Wow. I have another thing here maybe that we can, uh, let's take a look at this. This is um, thanks to Oblivious Benson, who is my own personal, I like to say Penelope Garcia. This is a post by Cora Twombly, March 23rd of 2021. And she's got their their logo there, Twombly Cattle Company, All American Beef. Whole yeah. or half hamburger by the pound. And it says, this one sold, but give us a call. We have more going in the next few months. We have a quarter beef up for sale. Going to the butcher today. If you're interested, give us a call. Have a blessed day. So I guess they not only do they own a cattle company, but they sell beef. So they say. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you don't think that's... Uh, the real deal. So tell me about the other two. So I have the names here that we spoke about before. They're Cole Trimble. Yeah. I don't know much about Cole Trimble, but he is one that is has been said that, that he's already been booked. Okay. And um, then there is the the Cole Twombly, Cole Twombly, and Bowley, B-O-L-E-Y. And I'm trying to verify if that's a first or last name, because that's exactly how it came across to me is Bowley. Hmm. And as you know, I was live. I'm fairly new at trying to share screens. You're good at it. I'm new at that. So for me to try to get in there and try to pull it up right. was, was going to be hard for me. And then there was Tiffany Adams and Tad Coleman. Now, there Look at is, this. this is breaking right now. Can you see your screen? I can. Shelly Lee Harmon. Confirmed to be arrested. Wow. Does that, does that ring a bell or do you, do you recognize that name? That name does not ring a bell. And is that is from today? Uh, Oblivious Benson just sent this to me. New arrest, Shelly Lee Harmon. Now, do we know, OB, that this is related? That's definitely not a name I've heard. But well, hey. let's look at her Facebook page. I mean, this is bizarre. Her Facebook page has a, a profile picture of Jillian and... Uh, Wait a second. Or she's saying that's a new arrest. Jillian's mom? I don't know. So Jillian's I will mom tell is you. saying that, that, um, that Jillian may not be able to be found. But this Shelly Harmon lives in Guymon. And she's got Veronica. I'm going to pull up this other picture. She's got Veronica and Jillian. Oh, I have, it's already on here. On her Facebook page. It's so sad. I, I just received something and it says that it's that it's Jillian's mom's Facebook page. Um, I don't do you pull up Facebook pages? Uh, I do. I have it. I see it and I see what it says. I don't know if you want me to pull it up. It's her name. Um, her first name. Her name is like KD. Yeah. Yeah. I. It's out it there. It's, I, mean, I think we should because it's out there. And this is okay. her mom. Oh. Um, I just want to cry. I know. So that tells me that maybe Granny did tell something that happened because the for, mom would not post that. For those of you who are just happen. listening and you're not watching the screen or you're in your car and you can't see the screen. Um, trigger Kaylee, warning. Trigger warning. Kaylee Dalby, who is the mom of Jillian um, Kelly, who's 39, has just posted on her Facebook page, Jillian has passed away. Man, prayers to that family. Prayers to that family. So all right, we're not sure on Shelly, but another arrest with similar info and dates. Okay, so we can't. All right, that's uh, could be speculative right now. Um, wow. So prayers sad. up for the family of Jillian Kelly, who's married to Heath Kelly, who is a pastor. He is a pastor or a minister in Hugoden, Kansas, and they have four children. So, so sad. Yeah, I wanted to tell you, um, Cora is Cole, the butcher's wife. So that Cole Trimble, that yep. must be the butcher. 
The butcher. That's what it says. It says Cora is Cole Butcher's wife. Well, Cole, there's two Coles in this. There's two, right? So Cora Twombly is married to Cole Twombly. We know that. Yeah, right? and that's not the butcher that I was told the name of. There's another butcher out there, and I'm not going to give that name yet because I think it will be coming up too. Right. It's not any of the names that I gave you already. So. Oh, man. Does it show their charges? I don't know that it shows their charges yet. Um, no, it said the locals were accusing Frank Twombly last night. Well, you know, they brought that. themselves into, into my live. Really? And, oh, actually. Oh, you might want to go pull my live from last night. I put a little yeah. word on there. I believe it was Tiffany and her daughter that called. And it got kind of wild. It's only five minutes long. Yeah, let's And I went and screen saved it. Because I could not believe it. Everybody in chat was like, oh my goodness. It was, um, wow. it was wow. Yeah, it was wow. Okay, so much so, wow. So much wow that I went in and I don't know how to do all this fancy stuff that you do. So I just went with my iPhone and screenshotted it. So the, the chat's in there too. But you can hear it and then tell me what you think about it. Okay, so which one I have your, uh, it's, it's a, a video, five minute guess, long right? video from last night. Got it. It says, call in Granny. Is this you? Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Okay. It's no, interesting. It's Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So you were live, just to set the scene, you were live last night on the scene. Where were you? What town were you in? I was back home. Oh, you're back home. Yeah. I was back home. Life. Let me tell you why I was back home. There's two different things that went on here. Mm -hmm. I was back home because News Nation, I'm sorry, they were putting out information that was not true. Uh, the black truck guy that they said blocked him in, mm -hmm. that blocked News Nation in, Laura Engel, and they were scared. After you play this, the one next to it, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you play, play, because the guy that was in that black truck, he tells the story that's the true story, and I only want truths out there. Yes. And he was the black truck that they said chased him. I, if It's up to you what kind of time you have. If you I don't have time, time to do it, after, after this, I want you to listen to this man. He called in on my phone, and I held it up to the screen, and we videoed it. But I'm, I'm going to stop so you can play it. Okay, here we go. So this is you last night on your live show, and this person called into your live show. Yes. I'll mute myself. How fun. That's Sophie. Sorry. Yay. I love you all. This is so cool. Hold on with me, sweetie, okay? Now, I'm going to assume that you're going to be not doing some crazy stuff here. I don't mind hearing what you got to say, and hopefully it's good. But even if it's bad, please don't start going all crazy or I'm going to end this call. But I think you're going to be all right, okay? So I'm going to move you. I need, Sophie, I need to tell me. If, um, okay, let's see here. Okay, go I, ahead and talk you, and let's see if, if I'm going to mute. Hold on, yeah. Go ahead and talk. Just say a couple words so we can see if they can hear you. Can you hear me? Sophie, can you uh, hear? Kind of, a little bit. What about everybody in chat? Say it one more time. Let's try it again. Say, can you hear me? Can you hear me? That I could still a little bit better for sure. Okay, let's try to do it. Let's go. Go okay. ahead, hon. Okay, so I've this live and, you know, following the case um, since it's kind of emergent, I'm, uh, um, I just, this kind of book has been really confusing with all the family members and everything, I'm trying to figure out who's who, but it just seems like a lot of the stuff that's getting posted is, like, slander. It just doesn't seem, like, it doesn't seem backed by evidence, like, I'm not seeing a lot of credible sources. I'm saying it's a lot of hearsay is what it seems like to me. And of course, it's like, you know, an unfortunate situation, you know, people are missing, people are hurt, but like, no one knows for sure what's happening to throw, like, just to make assumptions and to, it almost seems like harassment on the, on the other family. It just doesn't seem right. Well, I mean, if you, have you seen the court documents? I have, I have um, kept myself up to speed. I did see the, 
Rock, I'm just going to pause this for one second. Tell us, um, when this person called in, who did they say that they were? Did they just say that they were a local person who had information for you? Yeah, and she said she had been following the case, and she did call anonymous. So, and she called on my, my burner phone that I have, because my phone wasn't getting signal. I had to buy a phone. She called on that phone, um, and she kept calling, even though she knew I was live. So that really triggered me to know that something was maybe going to go kind of sideways here. Mm -hmm. And so I was literally holding that up to my computer because, like I said, I'm not stacking. You know, I don't have things set up like you do. So, OK, well, you yeah, yeah, no worries. OK, let's let's continue to play this and see what she has. And you think this is Tiffany? I think it's her daughter, but there ends up, in my opinion, uh -huh. and all 20 of my my team, we're all a team together. We hear two different voices, so tell me what you think if you hear two different women. Okay. The custody stuff, you know, it's all, all the stuff that's public record, but nothing indicating that, like, the other family was at, um, at foul play, like, had motive for that. I understand, like, you know, a custody battle is definitely, like, it can get ugly, but, I mean, murder's a pretty extreme, especially when, you know, paperwork's been filed on both ends and there's really no reason. Okay. So you're trying to say that Granny wouldn't be involved in this, or you think she's being slandered? Um, a little bit of both, I think, without solid evidence. And also you have to consider, like, the welfare of these children. Like, um, what would happen to them if something were to happen to, if, if she did something, you know? Like, I don't, I don't understand, like. Well, for one, there's other grandmas. But if you, if you're updated on the case, and you're calling in to try to defend uh, Granny, then you would know that Granny said in court, if you take these kids from me, bodies are going to drop. Because that is in the court paperwork. And he, yes, you would also, up. hold on, you would also know that Veronica filed for custody of them kids, and it was going to be April 17th. And she was going to get custody of them kids. You would also know that Granny's uh, attorney has removed himself from the case. So, um, yes, I understand all of that. And, you know, I, I do, you know, I, I don't know how that court case would play out. I don't know. And I'm not here to defend anybody. I'm just here to say that, you know, it seems very, um, it, it seems like it, you can create and stir like a bias, a prejudice towards someone who's presumed innocent per the constitution. You're presumed innocent until guilty. Well, you know, maybe we'll have another thing when 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 I want to let you come on here and we can do that. But right now, I know what I know. I've talked to witnesses. I know who's seen what. So, so I'm not presuming anything. Okay? I'm not pre presuming anything. I know what I know. And I know what the court papers. And it, this is no sex trafficking thing. I know what I know. And I know, um, and I know the witnesses. I I have a question. I have a question. New no, new lady so, right here. With these court cases, did you did you ever see that Veronica's brother? Yeah, this is this sounds like a different voice to me, right? Yeah, Rock, this is, is what you're talking about. Oh yes. This sounds like the different person. Okay, good. Yes. And then she, I'm going to just take this back a couple of seconds because now she's going to start to talk about the the essay by Veronica's brother that was alleged. Yes, and, and I don't let know. that go on very long. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, but now, like, how would she know that? Well, I mean, it was in the court documents, but still, she she seems it's almost it's like she's getting very defensive here. That's what I'm I'm keep picking up. I know what I know, and I know um, and I know the witnesses. I, I have a question. I have a question. So, with these court cases, did you did you ever see that Veronica's brother molested those kids? Did you see that? Did you see any of that? I saw that, but it wasn't Veronica. Okay, so then why would you want those kids to be around somebody that would do that? Okay, but, it, you, but it wasn't you, Veronica. You Listen, are you know you what? You're go, goodbye. You're gone. Okay, <gasps> I'm not going to do this with whoever this is. It's obviously Tiffany or somebody with Tiffany. Veronica is not the one that did it. And I did see that paperwork, and it was her. Wow. She said at the end, she said, are you a pedophile yourself? Yeah, and I was just done. I was done. 
Wow. What is the other one you wanted to play? The other one, News Nation, really, that, that's why I went live last night. Uh -huh. News Nation says that they were blocked in. It was Lori Engel and mm -hmm. Ashley Banfield said that they were blocked in. They were scared for their life, that this black truck blocked them in and that uh, followed them. The guy called me the other day. He didn't want to go on live, so I redid his, his story. And my, my whole thing last night was, let's get to the real truth. This I don't like these stories. They came out and said that the women were shot. Nothing has been released about women being right. shot. Right. News Nation would not have got that. That would have been something that law enforcement released. Right. This guy called in because he was there at 8.30 Monday and saw a news crew there. And they told a big story, scaring everybody, even me. Every time a black truck went by, I got scared. And this guy just wanted to make the story right. And it's actually a really good listen. It's about 15 minutes. But he tells exactly what happened while News Nation was filming and what happened. And it's not News Nation's story. Hmm. I'll send everyone over to your channel to do that later. Yeah. How about that? It's a 15 minute. I get it. It's a yeah. 15 minute long. Yeah, I know it's 15 minutes. And I, I wanted to go through some of the, uh, you know, what I think was maybe the trigger. I want to go through this petition for increased visitation. And also we want to um, talk about, let's see if we can, I, there was something on Twitter I wanted to show too. I don't know if you had a chance to see this because I know that you've been like live for days. Um, yeah. Look at, I just got to see where I saved it. Is it the Lou lady? Yeah, and it's the picture of like the convoy. It's the picture yes, of like all ahead. those like battle trucks. Um, yeah, what's her Nancy? Is it Nancy Lou? Nancy know. Lou, yeah, Nancy Lou. And I did show all that, but please show it. Yeah, so I think we have some new people joining. So let's uh take a look at this. One second, I'll share the screen. Okay, this is Nancy Liu. She's a reporter with News Nation, and this is her Twitter. And uh, the tweet says, this was three hours ago, extraordinary law enforcement activity right now in the Oklahoma panhandle, likely linked to the case of missing Kansas moms, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. At one point, over 20 vehicles, including SWAT, were in this convoy. There you have it. That's some crazy video. Yeah, How does that also. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, you. no, not at all, Beb. Go ahead. Go down just a little bit, and she shows Tiffany's place and another and an, another place. It's just a little bit below that. Yeah, this is uh, Tiffany's place, right? So it says this tweet says. Um, it says this just in Tiffany Michelle. I'm gonna say Michelle. It's it's spelled M-A-C-H-E-L, Tiffany Michelle Adams, 54, just booked at the Texas County Sheriff's Office. This is the scene at her home right now. And here's a picture. Now, Now, Rock, you had been or driven by that property. I know that you didn't obviously go on her property, but this is a still shot. What can you tell us about the property, the size of it? The It's pretty big. The first time I drove by there, there was like 15 broken, I thought broken down cars. You know, I figure people with a lot of money, like they have, that they'd have really nice houses. I didn't see that. I saw somewhere, everywhere down there in that panhandle, it seems like there's broken down houses that have been left abandoned. She had two Pyrenees dogs. The first time I drove by there on Tuesday, 
She had two Pyrenees dogs that kept coming out, the, the big white ones. Mm -hmm. And then after she found out I was in town, and listen, I, I started a tornado the size of Texas, I'm not going to lie. She seemed to vanish, took everything, all the vehicles and the dogs and vanished. But I still kept driving by there. There, There's a, like a water tower out back. And there was actually two pictures there, but I couldn't figure out the other picture. It was another place. I didn't know who it was. But she actually had two pictures there. Well, here's another one. This is her latest update from 31 minutes ago. It says That's this is the, the Texas County Sheriff's Department jail where the four in custody are being held, including Tiffany Adams. Well, she says Ted Cullen, but his name is Tad, T-A-D, Bert, B-E-R-T, or B-U-R-T. Let me see. Look at his court papers for a second. Um, Bert, B-E-R-T, Cullum, C-U-L-L-U-M, uh, and Cole Twombly, including, and, and we, we believe the fourth is uh, Cole's wife, Cora, correct? Right. Uh, so this is the Texas County Jail. So um, for those of you who are just joining, four are confirmed arrested in the disappearance of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, who went missing exactly two weeks ago today on April 30th. Veronica and Jillian were on the way from Hugan in Kansas to pick up Veronica's two children, ages six and eight, in Eva, Oklahoma. Jillian Kelly was with Veronica because she was one of four court-approved visitation monitors. Um, Veronica had had um, supervised cost, supervised visitation on Saturdays only. And four have been confirmed arrested today in Texas County. The car was found in Texas County, the car of the women. But we do know that the grandmother, Tiffany Michelle Adams, lives in Cimarron County, correct? Keys, Oklahoma is in Cimarron? I believe that is Cimarron. Yeah. Um, and, and that one guy that I told you about that used to be the sheriff, mm -hmm. he, he shows up to court with Tiffany, if you can believe that. Wow. So wow. if that tells you any connection there, and that's we, an yeah, absolute. Well, she's well connected with law enforcement. We know that um, because you talked to local. Yeah. Right? He, was, he was fired. He was ex-law enforcement. Did a lot mm -hmm. of bad stuff. So, Well, according to his LinkedIn, he still, I think, is law enforcement. So that was kind of scary. Like he was, and then he did some stuff, and then they let him back on the force. So we'll see what happens, um, if anything. I him, wanted to say one more thing. Sure. I talked to a lot of Jillian's friends. I mm -hmm. never got to talk to her husband, Heath. But one thing about Jillian is, you know, both Kansas and Oklahoma is an open carry state. And I was told right. that she also was strapped. She also had her weapon on her. Jillian did? Yes. She never went wow. anywhere without it. Wow. And that came from her friends. I didn't talk to her husband because I didn't want, I didn't go there. If he would have reached out to me, right. I definitely would have talked to him. But her friends insist that she had that gun on her because she did not go anywhere without it. Here's a picture of the two women. That's Jillian Kelly on the left, Veronica Butler on the right. Somebody is asking um, if, chat's moving quickly, if um, the Rickman family, which is also Tiffany Adams. So Tiffany Adams divorced Rickman and is currently with Tad Cullum. Is the Rick Rick Rickman family militia or law enforcement? I don't know. I have heard that name. I do not believe they're law enforcement. Um, they are, though. We you sovereign citizens. Have we confirmed that? Yes. Okay. And a lot of people who don't know what sovereign citizens are, sovereign citizens are basically... It's not even anything that's legally recognized. It's people who just don't believe that there should be laws and don't believe that they should have to abide by things like speed limits or really any laws. And there's really no, or pay taxes. There's no legal um, acknowledgement of this sort of, you know, class of people who call themselves sovereign citizens. But what have you learned since you've been down there about whether this may, and I will say that when I did, and I had started researching this case very early before the court documents were sealed all the way back on April 2nd, um, when I put their names into the computer system, the Oklahoma court records, the, it lit up like a Christmas tree. And we were talking about 
how many traffic infraction um, tickets and convictions that they both had, um, right. Chad and Tiffany, including, you know, failing to put a kid under four years old in a car seat. So uh, it's, it's as if they just didn't believe the law applied to them. And why should they wear a seatbelt? There were a lot of seatbelt violations, by the way, a lot, a lot of speeding, a lot of. So I think that even adds to the fact that they probably are sovereign citizens. We know that Tad is, correct? Right, right. To be. Yeah. And, and he, he has, you have pulled his history, right? Yeah. Because this is not just traffic. Yeah, I have uh, I have something right here for you. And they're known to have a lot of wedding weapons down there, big weapons. Mm-hmm. Let's uh let's pull this up. Okay, here is um here's his here's his firearm charge. This was um just from July thirty first, twenty twenty three. He was charged with feloniously pointing a firearm and he appeared in Cimarron County. So I believe, do you think his compound is also in Cimarron County? Yes. Okay. So this is July 31st of 2023. He was charged with feloniously pointing a firearm. Um, he was scheduled to come back to court on August 28th of 2023. Uh, the reason was it says defendants stated that he needed time to hire an attorney he was released on bond and it was continued until August 28th of 2023. And then mysteriously, let me uh, share this with you. In August of 2023, these charges were dismissed without prejudice. Just dismissed. Amazing, amazing. Just dismissed. And, and we had been speculating that they were connected and that they, she, Tiffany, or both of them were, you know, in with law enforcement and had friends in law enforcement. And I mean, what does this say? This, go ahead, dismiss it. Yeah. And the ex sheriff, which was the KM guy. Right. I'm not going to go into detail because this is your show. I mm -hmm. didn't mind because. I got the tag number. You. Yeah, he was following me, but he he was dismissed for a lot of things as being sheriff, and that's the same guy that would show up to court with her. Uh huh. So he was, yeah, he was connected. In fact, I'm going to tell you what his LinkedIn profile says without pulling it up, because I, I'm thinking that it would may maybe disappear. I screenshotted it, and I don't want to mention his name because again. You know, everyone should be um, innocent until proven guilty and all. So uh, let me just pull that up real fast here. Um, he was the agent in charge of the District 1 Narcotics Task Force from September 16th to present. So he still is. District 1 Narcotics Task Force agent in charge interesting and he's showing up to court with her mm -hmm. yep and before that he was with the keys ems oh still is from june 2011 to present he's with the keys ems he was with the cimarron county ems as still is now he was the chief of police in keys from july from 2010 to 2016 and he was the cimarron county sheriff from 2012 to 2013 and he was also with the um district 20 drug and violent crime task force from March of, from 2001 to 2007. So he's back, he's an agent in charge at the District One Narcotics Task Force, even though he was convicted on embezzlement charges. Right. I think that was sometime in like 2007 or something, seven. right? It was seven, yes. Now, do we know where the children are? Everyone wants to know where the children are. Um, the grandma, the other grandma has messaged me. She's trying to get a hold of the FBI, the OSMI, we don't know where they are now. Well, I will tell you, before this went down, they were going to school every day. She was taking them to this private school. So the oh. children were in school. Okay. So all the rumors that she left down and went to Colorado with them, right. them children was in school. 
They were in school. Okay. So, and we know that they're safe. I don't know if we can say they're safe. I don't know where they're at to say they're safe. Well, that's true. If she was in possession, I'm not even going to say she had custody because she really didn't have custody. She was she in had possession a temporary of the custody. Um, the other grandma said there is paperwork that she had temporary custody until the court hearing. Okay. Uh, and you would know that more than me, but that's what yeah. the grandma said. The other grandma said, because I said, she don't even have custody. She said, no, there is paperwork. She was given temporary custody until this hearing. Because Wrangler was in court ordered rehab because he spent 30 days in jail from February 21st till they let him out on March 22nd, 2024. He was arrested on domestic, domestic violence charges. He married last summer uh, to a woman who's been very vocal on Facebook. I'm not going to name her, but um, he was charged in February of this year on domestic violence charges against her and also against his mother-in-law. And that was a violation of the probation that he was on for uh, having possession of a firearm as a felon. So he was sent straight to jail for 30 days. So I guess when he got out, or I guess during the time that he was in jail, his mother must have had temporary custody. Yes, because um, everybody was saying there's no such thing as grandparent rights there which is true to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Say, I have a daughter, and and I'm seeing my grandbaby every day, and she gets mad at me and takes my grandbaby away. Mm -hmm. In Oklahoma, you can file with the court a petition, and they can grant you grandparents' rights just for visitation, not for custody. Mm -hmm. So the way I understand it from the other grandma, this was temporary, and Veronica had literally filed for full custody 10 days before that. And again, that trial was, or that hearing was going to be held April 17th. Actually, I just want to correct that a little bit too, because it wasn't for full custody. She was, she was um, at this point, she was just fi um, filing for a step up in custody. So I guess eventually full custody would have been the goal, but this was just, she wanted increased visitation because she only had Saturday visitation from something like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. until 5. And so what she wanted to do was she wanted to start doing, um, I have the documents here, but we could look at them, but she wanted to do. Um, I believe you, you know more than I do. Yeah, so. full, you know, full weekends because uh, Tiffany kept saying she was sick and she would cancel the visitation. Uh, and then she would say the kids were sick and she would cancel the visitation. But going, so she was looking for a step up. She wanted unsupervised one overnight visitation for four weeks and she wanted to meet in Elkhart instead of at four corners and then she wanted to step it up after that four weeks from uh from to Friday at 8 a.m until Sunday at 5 p.m and then I think they wanted to see how that went and eventually I'm sure that was the fear that she was going to try and get full custody and so I guess this was the trigger because there was supposed to be a court date coming up on the 17th, I believe, the 17th? April 17th. I remember that because right. it's my birthday. That's right. We're going to have to remember to have a little birthday party for you on here um, because you brought so much attention to this story um, and to these missing women. And we are still hoping for their safe return, although what I see breaking on Facebook is not... Um, it don't sound good. It doesn't sound good. It's not making me feel real hopeful right now. What else? Uh, well, while I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. you know, when I came down here, I thought I was coming to help a search party. Yes. And I ended up being the search party. I remember calling my husband. He would say, you haven't called me. I said, I've been busy. He goes, well, who the hell's running the search party? I said, me. He said, what? Yeah. No LE helped me, nor did they ever stop to help me. It was me and a couple friends from Wichita at first. People got wind of my YouTube channel, and a bunch of women came out. We went and walked all over Four Corners. For about two days, I had a search party. Then it was back to me. And then on Friday, the other YouTube person showed up. But before wow. that, it was just 
me, basically. And and you saw no searches going, no grid searches, no canine searches, no search mm -hmm. and there was nothing. No, just me on there, the right? ground and my and my two friends on their two horses. Wow. I found so, it really strange. Yeah, and it says here, Ban Van says that means that maybe the authorities knew possibly what happened right from the beginning. And also you had difficulty searching because a lot of the, the area is private property. You had to get permission. Right. And News Nation had set up at that Four Corners on their own. And a lady pulled up and said, do you have permission? She waved me over. Do you have permission to be here? And I said, well, no, not really. And she kind of, I wanted to call her Karen. But anyway, uh, I saw a guy across the street at the property and there was a local there. And I said, could you go ask him if we could set up over there for a command center? Mm -hmm. And he let me. And that's when I started seeing the black charger. Other vehicles were stopping, watching me. Wasn't the there to help. Wasn't people, there drones to help. were following you. Yes. And I saw drones at night. And I have never slept in my car. And I slept across from Four Corners with one eye open, watching, because I really felt like, there was a reason why they didn't want me on that property. Yeah. Yeah. And and so do, do we know if they have searched Tad Cullum's compound? You call it a compound. Some people I are do call it, it a compound. Coast. Everybody yeah, knows that me. he's got stuff bo booby rigged. He's got lots of weapons. And they tell everybody, don't go within six miles from there. People in that area know to stay away from there. And there was there was rumors, or do we even know if it's true, whether it was trip wired around the, the perimeter and there were, you know, things buried that could explode, maybe? Well, I didn't go there, so yeah. I couldn't tell you whether it's true or not, but it sure sounded like a Waco incident to me, to be honest. I That's kept calling it a compound, and I'm going to still call it a compound because the way they have it, Nobody wants to go anywhere near there. They threaten people about going there. They took over that Plainview School, and that's right. their church, the God of Misfits. And a lady lives down there who, who talked to me, who drove by there and said they chased her down the street, and she lives in that area. Wow. And they have potluck dinners on Sunday, and there's like two, 300 people in that church. Really? Uh -huh, and they're called God's Misfits. Wow. Um, P. Lola's mom says, so it went from no search, no search to four arrests quietly. How often do you see that? Like they had inside information. Yeah, well, we um, talked about on April 6th how there were rumblings on the ground that there were four arrests coming very, very soon. And it took them another week uh, to do it, but perhaps they knew so much more than we knew. I don't right? know. And then we thought anyway. Yeah, I, I felt like, honestly, in my opinion, and I could have been wrong, there's so much sex trafficking going on and mm -hmm. the way the car was placed. I personally felt like they were going down the route of sex trafficking. I didn't feel like, and they could have been going behind the scenes. I'm not going to say they didn't. Mm -hmm. But when you got a child custody battle going on, you got to really go with the but the facts you know. And yeah. there was no doubt in my mind this was all about the child custody battle that was going on. Yeah, and that was definitely the, the trigger, I think, to this because uh, Wrangler was in rehab and Grandma was getting desperate. Um, some, uh, Anne says, police likely had a whole plan for moving in on Grandma. Assessment of how many weapons on site, assessment of compound layout, psychological profiles, et cetera, preparatory for arrest action. I mean, you and I talked and we thought, you know, this could potentially be another Waco situation. And we thought, where, where's ATF? Right? Yeah. And I kept calling for ATF uh, every live. I do want to tell you, a family member has just hit me up at 611. It's 611. And it said, hey, Rock, I know you've been wondering and you've been really helpful. I just talked to my uncle. That's Veronica's uncle. And the children are with. Veronica's dad. Oh, good. So, and Veronica's dad is from West Virginia. So, if that gives any kind of hope, this is a very reliable source. 
So, and I know people keep asking, and I don't like to talk about the children. Right. But it says right now that that they are with Veronica's dad. That's great news. So, for those of you who are just joining, we have just confirmed um, from a reliable source a member of Veronica Butler's family that her children are with Veronica's father. Um, we were worried about that because the grandmother, maternal grandmother Tiffany Michelle Adams, age 54, has been arrested today. Let's put her picture up again just because. Uh, we might have some new people. Yeah, I want to see Granny again. <laughs> I actually I again. actually have a picture of her from the other day I want to send to my phone and give to you to show you what I saw. Okay. Are you That's interested cool. in seeing sure. that? Yeah, give me sure. just a minute to figure out how to get it to my phone and get it to you. Sure. You could text it to me. Oh. Yeah, so I got to figure out. Who are just joining. If I get kicked off, I'll be right back, okay? Okay, you got it. Uh, this is a picture of Tiffany Michelle Adams. She is the maternal, uh, paternal grandmother. She is the mother of Wrangler Cole Rickman, who is the father of Veronica Butler's children. She has been arrested. It's been confirmed today. 54 years old from Keys, Oklahoma, population something like 267. People locally were very afraid to speak out against her. And here's another picture of her. This is Wrangler, who has the little girl with the pink dress on. Tiffany Adams, that is Wrangler. Wrangler is in court-ordered rehab. He has not been arrested. Tiffany's other son and Tiffany's daughter. And this is a picture of Tiffany and her boyfriend, who has also been arrested, Tad Cullum. C-U-L-L-U-M. We do not yet know what the charges are, and I do not even see that OSBI has put anything on Twitter yet. So I don't know if there's going to be a press conference. Does anybody in chat have any confirmation on that? She's given me like Bonnie Raitt vibes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, you should have just got it. Wait till you see it. Okay. Let's see. And that was just the other day. No, it didn't come through yet. Thank you, Mary, for the cash app. And also to Maureen Francis. Thank you very much for the cash app. Uh, nope, didn't come through yet. It's, okay. Are you in a bad place? A bad service? <clears throat> okay. No, I've got real good service. But I also bought five memberships when I came in here for you. Oh, thank you so much. We haven't even been to the chat yet. It's Look okay. at let's see what's happening over here. Let's um as it went uh, through. The number you sent me to get on here with, that's mm -hmm. your number, right? Here, it just came through now. Okay. It nope, don't look that's not you. <laughs> No, that's not you. Wait, it's this one. I'll just text you back. Well, this is that burner phone because that's what the picture's on. Oh, okay. okay. Let me send it to that. Oh, don't say what? it out loud. <laughs> don't I say it out loud. <laughs> I would not say it out loud. Uh, you're, you're whispering. All right. Um, Only because I get so many area codes. Oh, and I, I You're right. Thank you for catching me, though. <laughs> but I wouldn't have went it all the way. Let me send it again. Thank you to... Uh, Wim Lishbrink for gifting five memberships. You are amazing. Jeff Whitweiler, uh, thank you for your super chat. Hi, he says, hi. Good to see you covering this. Thank you so very much. I was there from the beginning. This is my third show on this case, and I am proud to say that I had the correct information from the beginning, although I didn't release any names. But there were a lot of YouTube shows out there that were spreading a lot of, you know, Rock, we talked about it, information yes, that wasn't we did. correct. Um. Dawn, thank you so much for uh, thanking me for covering this case and for being a member for five months. And Rock Talk, thank you so much for gifting five memberships. That is amazing. Amber You're welcome. Gloria, thanks for gifting the membership. You're amazing too. Christine Fortunato, thanks for being a member for three months. Kel, thank you so much for your $20 super sticker. You are an amazing moderator and I appreciate everything that you do so much. Silver Swag became a member. Thank you. And uh, Paul Schoenbaum, thank you so much for the 20 are we going to hear from the authorities? Time. I don't know. Does anybody know if there's going to be a press conference like right now? Oh, I was, you know, in the past, any other time, 
there will be a press conference. Did you happen to get that picture? It's still not coming through. I don't know why. I just texted you back and I said this one and that was my number. So, all right, we're still waiting for it. It'll come. It'll come when it's ready. Um, Perry Mason, uh, thank you for becoming a, a new member. Cindy, thank you for the super chat. Says thanks for thank you for ever covering this case. So sad. It is so sad. Dog mom, thanks for becoming a member. And Cheyenne, thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. Thanks for always sharing your expertise with us. You are greatly appreciated. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. I wonder if you can share it on your end. I can put it up. Hold on. Let me try one more time. Okay. No worries. I got fat fingers, so <laughs> somebody might have got an anonymous. Are you book. back? You're back home now. When did you leave? I got home really late, about two o'clock in the morning, Thursday, Friday morning. Okay. So I haven't been home long. So you haven't been back. So after we spoke on Thursday and I said, it's getting really dangerous. I'm worried about you. That That's when you left and you haven't been back. Yes. And okay. I have not been back, but I've Great. been really sick. That dust really got me. Yes. So I did just send that one more time. Yep, there. I got it. Okay. It don't even look alike. And no, that was just a doesn't. couple days ago. Where did you see her? At the Dollar General in Boys, Boys City. Wow. That sure does not look like the woman that we just looked at in those no. Facebook pictures. And, and the thing was, the kids was with her, too. Wow. So, Did the kids to me... Look like they were, that, you know, being taken care of, and they were... Um, they looked good. Yes, they did. Wow. But her, on the other hand, um, either drugs, in my opinion, because that drugs or you just did something really bad and you're stressing that you're going to get caught. Right. Right. Like uh, the jig is up. Jig is up. Yep. The jig is up. The news is out. They finally found you. I'm so excited too. Cause I, you know, I spent a lot of time on my phone, on my computer going live. And, and another reason why I went live so much is because the locals, they really had nowhere to go and they found my YouTube and that was where they could go. And when I say locals, I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about Hugh Goodson, you right. know, the families of, of Veronica. I'm talking about everybody that was with Jillian. I mean, and there was people all across the world. I mean, we're talking Australia, UK. This yes. made, it made it all the way across the countries. It yes. has gotten big. It is international. International viewers, I know you're there. There's 70, over 7,300 of you. Tell us where you're from because this became an international story. Uh, but somebody asked how old are the children. They are six and eight. Um, and somebody says, wow, Rock Talk, you got that close to her? Mm -hmm. And you took her picture and she was like, what did she do when you took her? Did she see you take her picture? She was paying. She was paying. Wow. That's also where I bought my burner phone. Wow. This is this is crazy, but I um, mean, at least we are here uh, seeing arrests two weeks post disappearance, which, um, you know, we didn't know how long it was going to take. I was putting the pressure on every time I went live. I even had people going, I have a house in Yukon, Oklahoma. Let's go. Let's hit the congressman. Let's hit the governor. Let's mm -hmm. get people in here. And, you know, I, I really don't like to be political, but it no. is election year. And I said, and if they don't want to do something, let's go to the people that's running against them. Like, yeah. I was really trying to fire up the troops. Yes, you were. Yeah, you were. I know. And we were talking about who to call. We even suggested, I even suggested go to Kansas FBI if they don't want to talk to you in Oklahoma. Which um, I did. I did yeah. do that, by the way. You did? Yes. We have a couple... My family's really high up in the union, mm -hmm. and we have a couple lobbyists. And lobbyists, if you know anything political, they can do mm -hmm. a lot too. Yeah. So I had put some stuff in people's ears that could get to Governor Kelly. See, I worked for the state for 25 years. I kind of know how it works. Right. So I know that lobbyists can get a lot done. So yep. I was doing things that people didn't even know I was doing, trying to get things fired up. I was not going to just let this go. Yeah. You were not. I know. I know. You were very passionate about it. You still are. And you were not going to give up until 
it just became clear that this is a re these are really dangerous people, that this compound, who knows what goes on in there. I'm sure we'll hear some more in the coming days, but it was just such a mystery. Um, and I'm so glad that you're safe because I really would have felt horrible. You were worried. Uh, knowing you, that you, you went there worried. because you heard about this case from my show, that was just, yes, I was. <laughs> I was very worried. And I listened to you, like, I've watched you many, many times, and, and I adore you. I really do adore you. But this case, it hit me. I called a Discord meeting with my team. And to tell you something even stranger, uh, Jillian's last name is spelled K-E-L-L-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to dox myself, but that's my maiden name. And even wow. though we don't know each other, it, it still hit home. And so my I was bound and determined that I was going to do everything I could. And like I said, I, I stirred up a whole lot. You sure did. And, you know, you're my hero. I mean, you're um, out there. You were out there doing God's work when nobody else would. Um, and, you know, the fact that it was you and a couple of other women. Um, I love that. I love helping women. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. the women well, will get it done. It's kind of weird that last month was Women's Month. Yeah. You know, and here, right. here we get into Women's April. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't regret any of it. You you just gained some new viewers. Oh, and thank you. The, I'm going to send back to you. Are you going to go back live? I do want to go back live. And I do. I tell you what, when when everything's said and done and they do something for these women, I will be going back there if you would like me to include you in that on a show. I'd love to yeah. do that for you because I, I can that. follow it from here. But hopefully you follow the paperwork trail because mm -hmm. I'm not that person for it. Sure. And yeah. maybe we can, try, you know, work back and forth. I've had a lot of YouTubers hit me up. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. I'll say that now. Yeah. But Melanie, you, I got you. Like, I really yeah. do. Thank you. Thank you. I got you too. This was a team effort here. Um, Much love. It's a good day. Much love to you too. All right. I'm going to uh, just wrap up here and show everyone the court docs that I have, and then I'm going to teleport it back to you. So yes. thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you, you for being uh, boots on the ground. Yeah. For Let's us. pray for them families, please. Please prayers up prayers up for the families of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. And um, it, it is, in public now that Jillian Kelly's mom has just uh, announced that Tiffany Adams has confessed and that both women may, um, she says, are no longer alive. So um, please, prayers, everyone. Um, this is really, really, really scary. Um, and I think that we we're all hoping for a happy ending, but we are not going to get a happy ending. But at least today we can confirm four people have been arrested in Texas County, Oklahoma and are in custody. They are the mother of Ver uh, the grandmother of Veronica Butler's children on her, the mother of the father of the children. Her name is Tiffany Michelle Adams, 54. Her boyfriend, Tad Burt Cullum, Cole Twombly and Cora Twombly who live on Tad's land and own hogs and or sell beef. There's some conflicting information there, but it seems that the trigger for all of this was a petition that was filed. And I'll share that with you real quickly, because as you know, we do go through the documents here because we want to stick with the facts. So here is a petition that was filed. We went over the initial court papers. These are the more recent court papers and these are for, this was a motion filed on March 20th of 2024 by Veronica Butler for increased visitation with the children. And she had only been allowed supervised visits on Saturdays between the hours of something like 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And she made a motion by her attorney on March 20th of 2024 
to have a step up in the visitation. And Jillian Kelly's name is spelled wrong, but she is one of the court appointed supervisors. And here it says that according to the court's order in November of 2023, Veronica was entitled to have supervised Saturday visits between herself and the children as long as she was supervised. And what started happening is that Tiffany Adams, the grandmother, who is the mother of Wrangler Cole Rickman, who is the father of the children, started canceling the visits. And for example, it says here, um, the defendant, have, the defendant that's Veronica Butler, has visited with her minor children in accordance with the court orders as often as the intervener Tiffany Adams has allowed her. As soon as three weeks after the court entered the order regarding the defendant's visitation, the intervener, Tiffany Adams, and what that means is that she intervened in this court proceeding because the proceeding originally was between Wrangler, the father, and Veronica. So Tiffany Adams unilaterally, that's the grandma, canceled a visit between the subject minor children and the defendant. On December 8th of 2023, a day before the visit was to take place, on December 9th of 2023, the intervener, that's Tiffany Adams, texted the defendant and canceled the visitation because the children were allegedly sick. The defendant pushed back on this allegation and pointed out that the children had gone to school the prior day and that she is their mother and is capable of taking care of them even if they are sick. Coincidentally, this was the first weekend following the court's order where the intervener's preferred supervisor, Cheryl, was unavailable. Tiffany did not and has never approved of Veronica's alternate supervisors and took it upon herself to unilaterally cancel the visitation scheduled on December 9th of 2023. Well, that's very interesting because it says here that Tiffany, who has been arrested and is in custody in Texas County Jail, Oklahoma, has never approved of the defendant's alternate supervisors. They are named here and the third is Jillian Kelly. On December 12th, 2023, the court made a specific order about how makeup visits were to occur if visitation was missed on a regularly scheduled Saturday. And it says in that order, the court ordered that any makeup visitation from Ms. Butler will take place on the Sunday following the missed visitation from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or by agreement of the parties. The intervener, that's Tiffany the grandma, has continuously disregarded the court orders of the court and does what she wants when she wants with regard to defendants' visitations with the minor children and the makeups of said visitations. Defendant requested that she be allowed to make up the missed December 9th visit with the subject minor children on the Sunday following her regularly scheduled Saturday, December 16th, 2023 visit. Intervener, that's the grandma, told Veronica that she had plans with the subject children on the 17th and instead offered December 22nd for it to be made up. Defendant reminded Tiffany of the court order's recent order stating that makeups are to be done the following Sunday, to which... The interveners again told the defendant that they were busy and would not be meeting on the 17th. Again, the intervener does what she wants when she wants. The weekend of December 30th, 2023 was missed because the defendant had COVID, which she let the intervener know about in plenty of time prior to the scheduled visitation. The defendant was now down time with the subject minor children from missing the December 9th, 2023 visitation because of the intervener and from missing the December 30th, 2023 visit because she has COVID. The December 9th, 2023 visit was finally made up with the defendant on January 7th, 2024, which was a Sunday visit that took place after the defendant was able to have after the defendant was able I just lost my place. Well, in any event, the visit was finally made up January 7th, 2024, which was a Sunday visit that took place after the defendant was able to have visitation with the minor children on Saturday, January 6th. December 30th, missed visit was then discussed that it would be made up on January 14th, 2024. But again, Tiffany told Veronica that she had plans that day and would not agree to meet on the 14th. The intervener suggested that January 21st instead. 
Again, the parties agreed and planned on making up the December 30th visit on January 21st, 2024, but at 6.06 a.m. on the morning of January 21st, 2024, Tiffany texted Veronica and said that she, not the kids, was sick and would be canceling the visit. She then told defendant she was busy and had plans on January 28th and could not make it up on that day either. At this point, the defendant is still down one visit with the children from back on December 30th. Then again, Tiffany on February 3rd texts Veronica and says one of the kids are sick and she's canceling the visit for the next day, which was February 3rd. And then on Saturday, February 3rd, uh, Tiffany texted Veronica and said that the child was still sick and thus she couldn't make up the visit on the Sunday, February 4th either. So now she was down to being uh, two visits down with the children. It took all the way up until the weekend of February 4, 24th and 25th, 2024 for the intervener to allow the defendant to make up a missed visit from all the way back on December 30th, eight weeks later. Now the defendant was down only one visit. So you can see the, the attorney is going through every single instance of Tiffany, the grandma, canceling the visitation that she was entitled to under the court order. And she was only entitled to one day a week. So they go on to say the defendant, Veronica has, and then again, she's missing more visits. She's canceling. She's doing whatever she wants, the grandmother. Veronica has had no negative reports, nor has Tiffany, the grandmother, uh, filed anything to suggest that anything has been going wrong during her visitations with the children. As such, it's in the best interests of the minor children for their time with the defendant, their mother, to be increased. And I submit to you, this was the trigger. Veronica wanting increased visitation with her children. Especially in light of the recent continuance that was granted, in this case, due to the intervener firing her attorneys approximately 20 days prior to a four-day trial that had been scheduled for months. So it sounds like Tiffany fired her attorneys right before they were scheduled to have a trial so that she could get an adjournment and have more time. To make a plan. We don't know what the charges are yet, but we can surmise that her plan had something to do with ambushing Veronica and her court ordered supervisor and either doing away with them herself or having them done away with. So Cheryl, who was the only one who had supervised all the visitations, um, has been subpoenaed to testify, had been subpoenaed to testify for the hearing of April 17th, which is coming up this week. And the supervisor had not filed any negative reports with regard to the visits that Veronica was having with the children. So therefore, Veronica requests that this court allow her to have unsupervised visitation with the minor children on her already scheduled Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with the parties meeting at Elkhart, Kansas, which is closer to halfway for both parties rather than four corners for exchanges of the minor children. If you remember during the last stream on uh, that I did on April 6th when Rock Chalk was on Boots on the Ground and took us to four corners, it's like an abandoned gas station, tumbleweeds, it's very desolate. But a lot of people in the chat who are locals said, that that is a very common place for custody exchanges. I don't know why. And you will also recall from the other court papers that we went over with regard to this custody battle that's been going on since 2019, originally Veronica had a sheriff present at the exchanges, but at some point the sheriff's office decided that it wasn't necessary because they felt that Veronica had made unfounded allegations of either abuse or that she felt threatened by or that she was scared of Wrangler. So they were no longer supervised by the sheriff. Veronica would request that said unsupervised visits continue for four consecutive Saturdays and then step up to every weekend from Saturday at 8 a.m. until the defendant returned the minor children at 5 p.m. on Sunday with the parties continuing to meet at Elkhart, Kansas for exchanges. 
defendant would request that said unsupervised one overnight visits to continue for four weekends and then step up every to every weekend with the parties meeting at 8 a.m. on Fridays. The children do not have school on Fridays, it says, with the defendant returning the children to Tiffany at 5 p.m. on Sundays. Parties would continue to meet at Elkhart, Kansas for all exchanges. The court order regarding CV, that is Veronica's brother, who was mentioned before, who had been alleged to have perhaps essayed one of the children. The order regarding CV not being around the subject minor children would, of course, remain in place. The defendant believes the increased visitation to be in the best interest of the minor children. Even if the intervener were to cancel a visitation in this proposed stepped-up method, the defendant should continue on with her steps towards more visitation. The intervener should be able to ham the intervener should not be able to hamstring the defendant moving towards increased visitations overnights with the subject minor children by canceling visitations. The court should make this clear in any order to this effect. And that is signed by Veronica's attorney. And let's go to the chat, my friends. What say you? I think this is uh, possibly the trigger for what we are going to hear. I don't know, Paul, if we're going to hear from the authorities. I think we went over that. If not, thank you so much. Tammy Truth and Justice, thanks for becoming a member. And Harley62, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Danielle, thanks for being a member for three months. For Class Act, Melanie, and I think I speak for all of us when I say your coverage, knowledge, and facts of these cases are the reason that we are here. I thank you so much for that. KPIC, thanks for being a member from Mom. Hope the family can get a little closure. Prayers for them. Yes, prayers always, always, always for the victims. Ms. Mojo Risen, thanks for being a member for months. Thank you, Rock Chalk and ladies. Thank you, Carol, for your super chat, just in case YouTube gives you trouble. Thank you, Beth, for your super chat. Thank you for the excellent coverage. I appreciate you guys so much. Kim, Mel, do you see anything? Thank you for your super chat. Uh, do you see anything allowing Victoria to call her children whenever she wanted? I do not see that in the documents that I just read to you. Christy Reynolds, a painter's daughter, thank you for becoming a member. If you have any questions, put some um, question marks or something in front of your Questions so that I can see them. Yes, we have learned from Rock Talk, who has a reliable source within the family of Veronica Butler, that the children are now with Veronica's fa uh, father. So we do know that they have uh, they are safe. Um, Ro Roseanne, this is evil, and my prayers go up to the entire community of Cimarron in Texas counties because we know from wa watching Rock's coverage how affected you are by this. So many people were afraid to speak to law enforcement. Were afraid to speak to Rock. In fact. Rock, who has a YouTube channel that I'm going to send you to after this, was doing live streams from the ground. She was the only one searching. And the locals wanted to talk to her, and they did. And then she, she had the live streams up on YouTube, and then people started getting scared. Like, I, people know my voice in this town. This is how small my town is. And so she took everything down. Will she be charged with premeditation? It depends on what the charges are, Apple. I mean, I'm I'm looking at these court documents and I'm saying it sounds to me like there was a plan in place to prevent Veronica from from getting stepping up on her custody. And uh, you know, it just amazes me that people think they're going to get away with this. And it's been two weeks since they went missing, so it has taken what seems like a very long time to us, but in the the world of law enforcement investigations, it's really not. A tremendously long time. Victoria's Secret sounds like a cult, and I can guarantee, and well, we do, weren't going to talk about that because that was freaking people out. Um, but yes, yeah, so a lot of people say it is a cult that Tad Cullum lives on a compound. Uh, someone said Tiffany confessed. Thanks, Chloe's mom. Thank you. Uh, we do not know, but that is what the mother of Jillian Kelly is saying. Jillian Kelly's mom is saying that she has confessed, that Tiffany Adams has confessed, and that Jillian and Veronica are both not living, that they are both dead. Um, FBI did apply the pressure. Thank you for Unsolved Crimes Uncovered. I agree. 
Yes, she did. Um, we do not know. The, so far, OSBI has not announced a press conference. If anybody has seen it, if you could please put it in now because the chat has been moving so quickly, all, all stream, that I just, uh, the motive was she she wanted to protect the children. She And I think maybe in her own twisted mind, she thought she was protecting her children, her grandchildren by doing away with their mother. In fact, there's something else I want to pull up for you. And I forgot, I had this up before, but let me show this to you because this was an, another court document. This might give you a little bit more insight into this. Of course, as usual, I have too many windows open and everything just like shut down on me. So give me a second. I want to show something else that I found. I've been doing a deep dive on this for so long and uh, I had pulled everything to have it ready for when this happened because I had a feeling that this was exactly who was going to be arrested. And this was exactly what we were going to see. So let me show you this. This is part of a court document. Uh, here, the defendant and the plaintiff are referred to as um, Wrangler is the plaintiff and Veronica is the defendant. So it says the defendant and the plaintiff have had tele a telephone conversation that took place extremely recently, September 22nd of 2023, wherein the plaintiff admits that he never disapproved of any of the supervisors that the defendant had chosen for her supervised visitations and that it was his mother that would make that decision. And he felt compelled to listen to her. The plaintiff further stated that he had been threatened numerous times by his mother that she would kill him, quote, shoot him in the head, end quote, if he didn't do what she told him to do. That he would send the plaintiff copied and pasted text directly from his mother as if it were him. That the plaintiff believes his mother has, quote, cops in her pocket, end quote. Most importantly, the plaintiff admitted that he believes that his mother coaches and has coached the subject minor children before dropping them off with their current counselor. So there you go. It's in the court documents. The courts knew this. That's right. That is right. Respect. With respect, mostly. This is Cimarron County, Oklahoma. And it's right there. Yep. Is this why, is this why SWAT was brought in? Yeah. And also, they're saying that Tad Cullum who's the boyfriend of uh, Tiffany Adams. It's Tiffany with one F, by the way. The boyfriend lives on a compound. People say that there's some sort of cult activity or a church called God's Misfits on the property that has hundreds of people as members. And it's, it's scary. So there you go, my friends. There you go. Thanks, Pierre, for the cash app. Appreciate you so. I'm going to put up a picture of the people who have been arrested one more time for those of you who haven't seen. Oh, do tell. Is, it a, is Oklahoma a death penalty state? I did not look that up. I didn't look it up. God's misfits, yeah. Twisted, right? I mean, the whole thing is twisted. We do not have a picture of Cole and Cora Twombly. But here's a picture anyway of grandma, who we've been calling grandma, but she's 54 years old. Mm 
54 years old. Yes, Oklahoma is a death penalty state. And somebody is saying maybe that's why she confessed. And I think that that is a great point. Darwin lived there for years. It is a death penalty state. Wow. Well, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Uh, I had to go with this breaking news, even though I am on a college visit with one of my twins who are both going to college next week uh, at an undisclosed location. I am at Accepted Students Weekend, but if I come home saying y'all, you'll have some sort of an idea of the part of the country anyway that I am in, but I needed to bring this to you because I have been following this case from the beginning with you and with Rock Talk. Let me just set up, um, uh, a redirect to Rock's channel so that you guys can go over there and continue to watch her breaking coverage. She was boots on the ground for, I believe, something like 10 days searching and searching. And uh, I think it's in large part to her bringing a lot of attention to this case that more people started covering it and the locals started talking and it, they trusted her more than they trusted law enforcement. They did not want to go to law enforcement and talk about these people because they're very, very afraid of them. And uh, who could blame them? These are dangerous, dangerous people. One last thing I just wanted to show you before we break is some disturbing things that I found on Wrangler's Facebook. It may have been taken down by now. So um, I've got the receipts as usual, my friends. Which disturbed me. Although he has been in court ordered rehab, he has not been arrested and we do not have any information that he is involved in this in any way. Here's a post from June of 2016. What is an assault rifle? Like and share to educate the country. Seems like a lot of people are confused on exactly what an assault rifle is, he says in his post. His next post from July, uh, June of 2016. Share if you agree. I came into this world kicking and screaming while covered in someone else's blood, and I have no problem going out the same way. Here's another one from 2016. Again, this is Wrangler Rickman, the father of the children of Veronica Butler. I stand behind you in line at the store with a smile on my face and a gun under my shirt, and you are none the wiser, yet you are safer for having me next to you. I won't shoot you. My gun won't pull its own trigger. It's securely holstered with the trigger covered. It can't just go off. However, rest assured that if a lunatic walks into the grocery store and pulls out a rifle, I will draw my pistol and protect myself and my family and therefore protect you and your family. I may get shot before I can pull the trigger, but I won't die in a helpless blubbering heap on the floor begging for my life or my child's life. No, if I die, it will be in a pile of spent shell casings. I won't be that victim. I choose not to be. As for you, I don't ask you to carry a gun. If you're not comfortable, then please don't. But I would like to keep my right to choose to not be a helpless victim. There is evil in the world. If evil has a gun, I want one too. Copy and paste if you believe this too. Uh, it's important to point out that Oklahoma is an open carry state. And so you are allowed to carry a gun wherever you go, as long as you keep it on your dashboard or on your person where it can be seen. Um, thank you all so much for coming to visit tonight and for Molly, your super sticker. And I'm just noticing this weird light and the, the light from this window look my, make my eyes look a little, little freaky. But um, thank you, Molly, for your super chat. Mary, for becoming a new member. Um, Debbie for becoming a new member, Noni Lady for love it, love you all, your cupcakes and our cheese. Thank you. And Christy Reynolds. Um, thank you to my moderators for jumping on here last minute. I knew this was breaking and um, I didn't see anything about a press conference, but keep uh, on the eye out for that. And uh, I'm going to teleport you over to Rock Chalk so you can go and support her channel. She hasn't accepted a dime from anyone for gas or anything. In fact, she's been giving people gas money and she has all the children are eight and six. Um, she's been giving people gas money and she's been buying pizza for the News Nation crew. I can't believe they took it from her, but they did. Um, 
And thank you uh, to my channel members and to my viewers and my replay viewers. If you would please just hit the like button and subscribe on your way out, that'd be amazing. Uh, tribal areas have their own laws. Thank you so much for that, Deborah. Um, Rock is so, 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 so generous. As, as always, this is about the victims. Prayers up for the families of Veronica Butler, age 27, mother of two, and for Jillian Kelly, age 39 wife of Heath Kelly and mother of four. Jillian's mother has posted on Facebook that Tiffany Adams has confessed and that both women have been confirmed to be dead. It has not been reported yet by OSBI or the FBI, but we just learned the FBI was involved in this case 48 hours ago. So please, we send them our prayers and our thoughts and our heart.
That was just in time because my t internet totally crapped out in this hotel. So if you're still here, thank you for, for remaining here. I'm going to end the stream now. I had a reboot and everything uh, to send you over to Rock Talk. So again, be cool, be kind, be classy, my friends. It is not hard, really. It is so not hard. Prayers, justice for Veronica and Jillian. Good night, everyone.